is made and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. God our Father, we thank you today for life, health, and strength. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Most of all, Father, we thank you for your son Jesus. Yes, Father, that though is cloudy on the outside, his sun shines in on the inside and all over the world. For that we say thank you. Yes, Father, we come today thanking you for this privilege that you've given us to come in and worship you. And now, Lord, we come today asking for your presence and your power to continue to fill this place. Father, those who are watching or listening virtually, we pray that your presence and your power will fill their places as well. And that, Father, that all of us will avail ourselves to the moving of your spirit. Because we can't do anything that has been assigned our hands to do except we have your power and we have your spirit. So now, Lord, we pray today that we will open up our hearts and allow you to come in. Yes. Father, that you might get the glory and the honor. Yes. That man might not see any of us, but that he might see all of you. Yes. Now, Lord, whatever you have given us to do, Father, we're going to do it to your glory and to your honor. Yes. We pray that your presence and your power yes. will fall fresh on each and every person that's yes. gathered here in your house today. That when we leave your house today, we can say that it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. Yes. In the marvelous and magnanimous name of Jesus, the Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Can we say good morning to each of you and we're glad that God has allowed us to be back in his house on this Sunday after Thanksgiving. And for that, we say thank you. Thank the Lord. We thank God for the rain that he has given us. Yes. We yes. thank him for the traveling grace and mercy that he's given us yes. Yes. as we were traveling here this morning. Amen. Now we pray that we will open up our hearts yes. and open up our minds, that though it might be dreary on the outside, yes. we pray that God's sun will shine on the inside. Yes. Amen. Amen. That we that he might get the glory and he might get the honor. Yes. Before we come with our announcements, our scripture reading for the morning is going to be Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. Well, that's just call we'll read that for us. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. The next Sunday is Eloise Jordan and Rachel Kennedy. The deacon is Will Gibbs. I want to say congratulations to Lou and Joe Jackson for their 40th wedding anniversary today. Amen. 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 Church conference the second Sunday after worship. Those of you that would like to participate in the coat drive, the deadline is December 18th. Chinese auction for disadvantaged to support disadvantaged children will be at the Richburg uh, fire station that's right down the street uh, on December 17th. And on next Sunday at 5 o'clock, I'm sponsoring Christmas in the Richburg Park at 5. If anyone would like to come, Christmas in the Richburg Park next Sunday at 5 for those of you that would like to come. We had so much problems with the park, but we tried to catch them up. <laughs> so, it says, did, did you know routine screening for cancer saves lives? Screenable cancer includes lung, prostate, breast, skin, cervix, colon, uh, colon, and oral cancers. Also, it says, did you know African-American men are disappropriately impacted by cancer in South Carolina. So basically it says African American men are at a high risk of these type cancers. Please have your annual exam. Sometimes we think it's this great, it's degrading us, 
But if it's saving your life, Amen. it's not it's great. So please, women that have husbands that might not be here, please make sure your husband, your son, your grandson get their things checked. Because when it comes up, you know, right now, you know, this guy just told me the other day that uh, they found he have cancer. And I said, have you not been doing your checkup? Mm, you know how us black males are. I said, that's the problem right there. Mm -hmm. So please, ma'am, please, sir, even you men that have sons, talk to your sons. Not don't leave it to the wife to talk, or the mothers to talk to them. You talk to them as well. Amen. Team Sorry. up for Jesus. Wear your favorite team jersey. Sunday, December the 4th, 2022 at 2 o'clock p.m. The guest speakers will be Clifford Boyd and Clifton Boyd of Columbia, South Carolina. <coughs> the name of it is Right Direction Baptist Church, 103 Sesame Square in Chester. This is next Sunday at 2 o'clock. So you go to that at 2, get out of there, and come to Richburg Park at 5. <laughs> <laughs> but this, I'm, I'm assuming they're brothers or twins. Uh, they are they are they're speaking um, next next Sunday at Right Direction Baptist Church, 103 Sesame Square, Chester, South Carolina. Also, do we have any visitors this morning? And yeah, we are glad all of you are here. The rain has slowed us down, but nevertheless, God's love and, uh, and acceptance continue to glow. Yeah. But uh, hopefully the word that's been given to Pastor Sanders this morning for our hearing, hopefully it's a word that you can use and spread and cause better life for yourself as well as others. Continue to love yourselves as well as others and continue to know who God is in your life. Amen.
over again. Amen. This morning our scripture is coming from Psalms 11 and 3. And it reads, I'm going to be reading it from the, the International Children Bible. Then I'm going to read it out the King James Version. The King James Version says, If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Children Bible says, When all that is good fall apart, what can good people do? For a topic this morning, God is still good. Yes. yes, God is still God. Mm. You know, I like reading the book of Psalms mm. because King David wrote most of the Psalms. He said, When we need his son, you can tell he was a real live person mm -hmm. and he wasn't afraid to be honest with God. Mm -hmm. Do you ever talk to God? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we do. King David talked to God about everything. Mm -hmm. Do you talk to God about everything? Mm -hmm. Yes. He told God about his worries and fear. Mm -hmm. He told God about the things that made him happy and the things that made him safe. David even talked to God about his enemies and at times he was angry. Guess what? King David also Ask God a lot of questions like this one. When all that is good fall apart, what can good people do? Mm -hmm. You know what good people can do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Believe. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it might seem like everything is falling apart. Mm -hmm. If you look around the world today, there are pretty big stuff going on, going on. Mm -hmm. There are wars, there are wars, and there are fighting. There are disease and virus. Mm -hmm. People are saying that right things are bad, mm -hmm. and wrong things are right. Mm -hmm. And people are hating each other because of what they look like, mm -hmm. or who, or where they come from. All of this stuff has been happening since Adam and Eve first took a bite of that forbidden fruit right. some thousands of years ago. Right. Jesus warned us in the world you will have trouble. Mm -hmm. But he also said, be brave. Mm -hmm. I have defeated the world. Mm -hmm. John 14, John 16 and 33. There is no doubt that you need to be brave in this world. But you can be brave because no matter what kind of crazy thing happens, mm -hmm. God is still God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is still, still on his throne. Psalm 11 and 4. Where is God thrown in? In heaven. You're right. Mm -hmm. The next part of that verse says, The Lord's throne is in heaven. <laughs> he is still in control. Proverbs 19 and 21. Many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stay, be carried out. And he's still going to keep his promise to, and take care of you. Psalm 55 and 23. Cast your burdens on the Lord and he shall sustain you. And he shall never permit the righteous to be loose. God is still in control. Yeah. All we got to do is believe, children. Mm -hmm. Okay? Believe on the Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come this morning just to say thank you. Thank you. Father God, I thank you for our children. Yes. The one that is in the church and the one that is out there on foot. Lord, I just want to thank you. Father God, continue to encamp your angels all around the power. Father, continue to cover them with your glory. Father God, keep them alive. God, protect them and keep them going in all of their ways. At least they that stay good in this stuff. Father God, I just want to thank you for who you are. Thank Father you. God, I just want to say thank you. Because in you we live and move and have our being. Yes. Father God, I thank you this morning. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Our scripture this morning is coming from Isaiah 40, 1 through 5, the New King James Version. And it reads as follows. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. The boys of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain shall be brought low. The crooked place shall be made straight, and the rough place is smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. God's word for God's people. Sunday 
after Thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Realize and understand that we, as God's people, we know that every day is a day of Thanksgiving. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. As we said on last Sunday, we don't have to wait till the fourth Thursday of November. Amen. To celebrate Thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Now we have we come into Yuletide season, the season that we call Christmas. Yes. And we pray that we will forever remember the reason for the season. Amen. 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 Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 and 5. If you have found it, you may stand in reference to the reading of this word. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 and 5. And it reads, The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. You may be seated. I want to talk this morning from this thought. Prepare for Christ and Christmas. Yeah. Prepare for Christ and Christmas. We are in the winding down phase of the Thanksgiving season. We thank God for bringing us to this point in the year. Today marks the beginning of the Advent season on the Christian calendar. This is the time where we reflect, review, and remember the birth of Christ and the expected return of his second coming. <laughs> Christmas is a festive time of the year where people will go all out with decorations. Christmas shopping lists, getting houses ready for family and friend gatherings. Mm -hmm. Many go in much debt to purchase gifts. Our creditors and our churches take a hit financially with the money that's spent during the Christmas shopping season. <laughs> As I look at the landscape of our nation and the church, it's clear to me that we need to go back to celebrating the true meaning of Christmas. Mm -hmm. We've allowed ourselves to become, to become caught up in the commercialization of Christmas. We become known to why we are supposed to celebrate the season. Mm -hmm. We are concerned too much about gifts and not enough about God. We become too concerned about decorations and not enough about the divine Son of God. Yes. We become too concerned about holly and not enough about holiness. Oh, we oh become too concerned about mistletoe and not enough about the miraculous entry of Jesus into the world and his miracles. Yes. We become too concerned about lights and not enough about the light of the world. Yes. Uh, we become too concerned about what the stars do for Christmas gifts and not enough about the bright and the morning star yes. and the savior of the world. Yes. I'm not minimizing those things, but it's time for us to celebrate Christmas for who it is and what it is about. Yes. Where would we be without Jesus? Yes. What kind of future would we have had had Jesus not entered into the world? Yes. How much better would we be if we would give more and receive less? Yes. How would the retailer's balance sheet look if it weren't for celebrating Jesus' birth? Yes. We need to prepare our hearts, our minds, and our souls for the birth of Jesus. We celebrate Christmas once a year. But Jesus gives to us daily. Yeah. We are able to celebrate the new birth daily because of who he is and what he did on Calvary. Yeah. When I consider Easter and the resurrection and Christmas, Jesus was giving. Yeah. He was giving when he came into Bethlehem. And he was giving when he was hanging out on Calvary's yeah. cross. Yeah. I come today to help us to refocus on Christmas. We need to refocus on who Jesus is and why we celebrate him. Yeah. The church must dwell on the spiritual aspect of Christmas. As we prepare ourselves for the secularism and the commercialism side of Christmas, let's not forget about Jesus. Yeah. There's too much happening for us to be caught unprepared to see Jesus. Yeah. People are dying in droves. People are being gunned down in stores, in schools, in malls, at work, and driving along in their cars. Amen. Jobs are closing. 
Some are cutting back on their hours. They, these jobs treat you like nothing but want the best out of you. Yes. Families are at odds with each other about nothing. Yes. Church members are at odds with each other about nothing. Yes. Let's get things in order. Yes. Let's stop fighting each other. Let's get ready to receive what God has for us. Yes. To receive what he has, we must prepare our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Yes. We must surrender and submit our will and our way to God. Yes. We must do as 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, yes. which are called by my name, yes. shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face yes. and turn from their wicked ways. Yes. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Yes. But we must be willing to sit at Jesus' feet and allow him to pour into us what we need to make it in the world. Mm -hmm. Let's prepare for Christ and Christmas. Yeah. And Advent for some people is the season that focuses on expectation. And many think that it serves as anticipation of Christ's birth in the season leading up to Christmas. Uh -huh. This is part of the story, but there's more to Advent. The word Advent is derived from a Latin word meaning coming. Well, scholars believe that during the 4th and the 5th centuries in Spain and Gaul, Advent was a season of preparation for the baptism of new Christians at the January Feast of Epiphany, the celebration of God's incarnation represented by the visit of the wise men to the baby Jesus. Uh, his baptism in the Jordan River by John the Baptist and his first miracle at Cana. During this season of preparation, Christmas, Christians would spend 40 days in penance, 40 days in repentance and forgiving, 40 days in prayer and fasting to prepare for this celebration. Mm -hmm. Originally, there was little connection between Advent and, Christ and Christmas. But by the 6th century, however, Roman Christians had tied Advent to the coming of Christ. But the coming they had in mind wasn't for Christ's first coming in the manger of Bethlehem, mm -hmm. but it was for his second coming in the clouds as the judge of the world. Okay. It wasn't until the Middle Ages that the Advent season was explicitly linked to Christ's first coming at Christmas. While it's challenging to keep in mind amid holiday celebrations, shopping, lights, decorations, and Christmas music, Advent, is intended to be a season of fasting, much like Lent at Easter time. We, we recognize this period of mourning for the violence and evil that's in our world. It's somehow, the violence and evil is somehow magnified many times over during the holidays. Reflection on the violence, the chaos, the commotion, the unrest, the corruption, the homelessness, and the social injustice causes us to cry out to God to make things right and to make things better. Yeah. It moves us to want to see death's dark shadows put to flight. It affords us the chance to look forward to a better day. Mm -hmm. And our sinfulness and our need for grace leads us to pray for the Holy Spirit to renew his work in conforming us to the image of Christ. Mm -hmm. Advent helps us to focus on hope, yeah. on preparation, on joy, and on love. Yeah. We need all of these if we expect to see the Savior in heaven. Yeah. We need all of these to make it in the world that has little to no regard for Jesus. Yeah. Let's get ready for Christ and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Now allow me to put in perspective why we celebrate this season and how far misguided some are about Christmas. The story goes of a woman who was having a gathering to celebrate the birth of a newborn son. She invited a bunch of friends over to celebrate his arrival. She welcomed her guests and they all had a great time celebrating, eating, and drinking. After a while, one of the ladies said, well, bring the baby out. Let us see it. The mother went to get the baby from his crib. He was nowhere to be found. She started to panic 
and she started to feel fearful. Suddenly, she remembered that the baby was still at her parents' house <laughs> where she had left him that morning. She and the guests had been having so much fun, they had forgotten what the party was about in the first place. During this Christmas season, many people get busy with celebration yes. and forget that the birth of Jesus Christ is the reason yes. for the season. Yes. Let's prepare for the reason for the season. Yeah. Isaiah has been labeled by some scholars as the fifth gospel writer. He wrote much about Jesus' birth and his death. He wrote about his forerunner, John the Baptist. In the text before us, he was writing to comfort God's people. We're in some tough and some challenging times. We need some encouragement and some assurance from the word of God. Yes. We need words that bring hope instead of despair. Mm -hmm. We need words that bring joy instead of sorrow. Yes. We need words that inspire us, that, that excite us, and lift us. Yes. God's word can do just that. Yes. His word also prepares and equips us for the journey. Yes. It gives us what's needed to celebrate and remember what Christmas is about. Yes. At the time that Isaiah was writing, he was writing to the people because they needed a message of salvation. Mm -hmm. They were facing 160 plus very difficult years. Mm -hmm. For about 93 years, they would witness a stream of unparalleled wickedness flow through their nation, a stream that would gain momentum and rush madly to its inevitable end, the fall of their nation to Babylon. They would then be deported and spend 70 years, 70 long years scattered throughout the Babylonian Empire. They were to suffer the unbearable and discrimination and hardship of a subjected enslaved people. They needed to know that God was with them. They needed to know that he was going to deliver them and set them free. They needed to know they would be pardoned after repentance. Mm -hmm. So in verse 3, we began to delve into the text. Isaiah wrote there was going to be a voice coming with some wonderful news. Uh, there was going to be a voice that was going to make a way for a king. Yeah. But in that day, when a king was coming, the air there was calls in the area for a great celebration. Uh, enormous preparations would be made when a king was coming. Either a specific road would be built or an existing roadway would be used to fill the valleys, to lower the hills and straighten out the crooked sections. At Christmas for us, there are some crooked ways, some crooked wheels and some crooked words that need to be straightened out. There are some mountains of gossip, some mountains of arrogance, some mountains of inconsistency, yeah. some mountains of complacency, some mountains of inactivity, some mountains of laziness, and some mountains of attitude adjustments that need to be brought down. Yeah. We need to straighten out our lives and our lips because they are too crooked and they are too wicked. Yeah. Uh, we need to tear down and tear up some stuff in our lives during this season. Yeah. Yeah. We need to prepare ourselves yeah. for Christmas mm -hmm. by getting ready to spread the love of Jesus. Yeah. We need to let people know that Jesus is the reason for the season. Yeah. He's why Christmas is merry yeah. for Christmas. Yeah. For Christmas. It's not merry because of video games. It's not merry because of jewelry. It's not merry because of money. It's not merry because of gift cards. It's not merry because of toys. It's not merry because of clothes and shoes. It's merry because of Jesus. Christmas is merry because of Jesus' grace and his mercy. So we need to prepare ourselves for Jesus. Put your focus on faith and not on food. Yeah. Put your focus on the tree which was at Calvary yeah. instead of the Christmas tree. Yeah. Put your focus on the presence of Jesus yeah. 
in your life and not on the presence under the tree. Uh, let's prepare for the coming of Jesus. Let's tell others that Jesus is the answer for all of our problems. Let's tell them that a king is coming. Let's prepare for Jesus by moving out the world and moving in the way of Jesus. Let's prepare for Jesus by moving out the stuff yeah. and welcoming in the Savior. Yeah. Let's get ready for Jesus yeah. by giving instead of receiving. Yeah. Let's get ready for Jesus yeah. by getting rid of fear and picking up faith. Yeah. I recognize we want our houses to look good. Yeah. We want our trees to look good. Yeah. We want to make sure that the atmosphere is festive and a beat. Yeah. But if you want to welcome someone into your house this Christmas, yeah. Jesus wants to come in. Yeah. Preparation is necessary yeah. when Jesus is coming into your house. Yeah. We need to throw out hate. Yeah. We need to throw out laziness. Yeah. Throw out stubbornness. Yeah. Throw out greed. Yeah. We need to throw out uncommitted and undedicated lives. Yeah. We need to prepare our hearts. Yeah our souls and our minds. Yeah. We need to change our mind yeah. and change how we look at things. Yeah. We need to seek Jesus and Him only yeah. for serve and worship only Him. And He will give you everything you need. Yeah. So I admonish you in closing. Yeah. Don't forget to celebrate Jesus. Yeah. Let's talk about Jesus. Yeah. Let's witness for Jesus. Yeah. Let's testify about Let's worship Jesus. Yeah. Let's honor him. Yeah. Let's praise him. Yeah. Let's give to him. Yeah. Let's magnify him. Yeah. Let's glorify him. Yeah. Let's edify him. Yeah. Let's remember him. Yeah. Let's thank him. Yeah. Let's celebrate him yeah. for who he is yeah. and for what he has done. Yeah. For Jesus is coming back. forget the reason for the season. Yeah. But as we are preparing ourselves for Christmas, let us also prepare ourselves for Christ. Yeah. Because death doesn't take a holiday. Yeah. Amen. 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 The two gentlemen who were killed in a helicopter crash on Tuesday, they're in shock. Holiday season is somehow or another during holidays 
that death is magnified. So let us prepare ourselves, not only for Christmas, but prepare ourselves for Christ. It's good to know that those two gentlemen had prepared themselves for Christ. Yes, yes. They were ready to go. They live their faith daily. Yes, yes. And some might be wondering why did God take them? Yeah. God took them because they were ready to go. Yes. And he leaves us here to get our, get our lives in order. Yes. But while we are here, we can't get our lives in order on our own. And we can't get our lives in order doing it our way. We got to be abiding by God's standards. So let us prepare ourselves. Not only for Christmas. People got people got they got got everything prepared for Christmas. But I wonder how many are prepared for Christ. How many are ready for Christ to come? We're ready for Christmas. Some people been ready since last Christmas. <laughs> We're ready for Christmas. We got all of that down. But are we ready for Christ? Yeah. And it's time that God's people put the Christ back in Christmas. Amen. 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 And these, these retailers run around here and they bash religion. But they make millions of dollars. Offer Jesus to Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They want no parts of it until it's time to make money. But they need to remember that He is the one yeah. who has allowed them to make the money. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So let us not get caught up in the secularism and the commercialism of Christian of Christmas. But let us remember the real meaning. Let us remember who is the reason for the season. Yeah. And let us remember, if you don't get anything for Christmas, if you got Jesus residing in your heart, yes, yes. you got more than the world will ever give you. Yes, Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't get all caught up about what people don't give you. If you got life, health, and strength, and food to eat, and clothes on your back, and health and strength, and a roof over your head, you got Christmas. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. You got Christmas. I taught my children at an early age that Christmas isn't about the toys. It's not about the goodies. It's all about Jesus. And they have grown up today to know that if they got somewhere to eat, got some, something to eat and somewhere to live and got health and strength that that's Christmas in itself. Yeah. So Mount Pleasant I challenge you today let's prepare for Christmas but let's also prepare for Christ. Yeah. And if we're prepared for Christ we're going to be prepared for Christmas. Yeah. Because he is the reason that we have Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. So let us prepare for Christ and Christmas. Let us stand there may be one in the sanctuary or one in the virtual space who wants to be prepared, who really wants to be prepared. It, you're ready for Christmas, but you aren't ready for Christ. You aren't ready for the life after Christmas or the life after you leave this world. Come on. Christ stands waiting. He's already given the gift of salvation. It's the gift. You don't have to pay for it. This is a gift. You don't have, he, 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 all he wants is for you to accept him. You don't have to give him anything for it. Come on. You don't have to do anything for it. Is there one who wants to be prepared not only for Christmas, but you want to be prepared for Christ? Come on. Is there one in the sanctuary? Is there one in the virtual space? For well, he's awesome. He's awesome. Your Christmas will be awesome if you will allow Christ to be the center of your joy. Is there another? 
There may be one who desires to rededicate or recommit today. You, 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 you've been prepared for Christmas. You're not, you're not doing all that you could do for Christ. And you want to rededicate or recommit your life to him to do even more. The door is open for you. The invitation is extended to you as well.
We pray, Father, for your strength, your peace, and your comfort. For your assurance and your reassurance that they are not alone. Help them, Lord. We know that you're the only one who can fill that empty void in their lives. Father, we know that you are God who you are the only one who can bring peace and bring comfort. So we pray that you will do just that. Not only now, but in the days, the weeks, and the months, and the years to come. Lord, we pray today for Mount Pleasant. Father, that you will continue to rule and have your way in this place. Father, help us to not only prepare for Christmas, but help us to be prepared for Christ. Father, when we prepare for you and you come into our lives, Father, we can do more in your kingdom. Well, Father, your Sunday school lesson has told us to be strong in the Lord. Father, we can't do anything without your strength and your power. Father, we can't encourage, we can't empower, we can't enlighten, we can't evangelize, Father, except you are residing on the inside. So we pray, Father, that you would do just that. Father, we pray that you will break the hearts and minds of our people who have not found their way back to your sanctuary. Father, help them to know that as you cover them, Wherever they go, you can cover them in your house. Help them to know, Father. You have said in your word, for Satan, not the assembling of the sales amongst the saints. Father, I realize that we, we learned that the virtual space was good for about two years or so long. But now, Lord, you have assured us and reassured us. That, Father, you cover us wherever we go. And I just believe, Father, that you are God enough that you won't even cover us in your house. Thank you, Father, for making a way for us to come back into your house. But we thank you also, Father, for making a way for your church to become even more visible and more vocal. Now, Lord, continue to move as only you can. And, Father, we realize that sometimes when you move, Father, sometimes you got to move some things and some people out of our way. You got to you got to prove some stuff. You got to cut back some stuff. You got to cut off so that your church can flourish even the more. So whatever needs to be pulled, whatever needs to be cut off, cut it off, Lord. So that we may flourish even the more. Now, Lord, we have four more Sundays left in this year after today. Father, we pray for your presence and your power to fill this house. That we not only feel your presence and your power in the house, but feel it, Father, as we go from place to place. Not only on Sunday, but every day of the week. Lord, we pray that these last four Sundays, Father, we, we pray that these last three days of November, Father, in these last, in these 31 days of December, Father, we'll see overflow. Father, that we will see souls saved. We will see lives changed. We will see people delivered. We will see hearts fixed and minds regulated. Father, we will see your spirit fall fresh in your house. Paid. We want to see debts erased. 
Be safe. Be safe this week. Be safe as we go traveling.